In this video, I'm going to talk about CT or CAT scanners as they're known. What does CAT stand for? No, it's not a little cute meow thing. It's even better. It stands for Computerized Axial Tomography. Now, what does tomography mean? Well, it comes from Greek or ancient Greek. Tomo, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, means slices or sliced. And graphy is to write. So it kind of splits up as when it scans a human into slices and that means the doctor can therefore see the patient in their different slices and kind of almost walk through the body so you can see how much better it is than just one x-ray from above which just creates an image looking as if you were from above this brings it into layers so you can look at the separate layers and you can create we can see for example say a tumor in three dimensions um, so you can see exactly where it's located what does a cat scan look like well it looks like this and in here is the little x-ray this uses x-ray cat scanners the x-ray goes down and on the other side is the detector which picks it up so it looks something like that as you can see the x-ray coming in this way detector on the other side this image shows the x-ray tube which moves around the patient and the detectors on the other side and remember it's scanning it in layers so it creates images in layers which is then put together as you guess from the name C for computerized by a computer and it takes a lot of processing power because there's lots of images to put together what the computer does is it breaks the body up into little three-dimensional cubes these cubes are called voxels imagine them a bit like pixels pixels are the equivalent but in two dimensions your screen now you're looking at it's broken up to millions and millions of tiny little pixels which come together to give you the whole image but because the human body is three-dimensional unless you're homer simpson your body's split up into these tiny little voxels um up here shown up here now how do these work well i'm going to show you that down here the first thing to think about is that different parts of the bodies have different densities for example your bone is much denser than say your blood so what the detector or the x-ray is doing is pick up these different densities because remember if you look back in the topic different densities attenuate the x-rays by different amounts imagine a small part of your body that's split up into a four voxel array which you can see here consider a small part of the body made up of four voxel array shown here remember this would be in 3d but we're just representing it in 2d to make it simpler how does the CT scanner know the density of each of these voxels? Because remember, they could then pick up things like, say, a tumour, which is denser than surrounding tissue. Now, you might say, well, let's just shine an X-ray in like this. But the problem is, consider a small part of the body made up of a four-voxel array. Now, remember, this would be in three dimensions, but I've just simplified it into 2D here so you can see it. Now remember, what the whole point of this is, is to try and find the density of the different voxels or the different parts of the body. Remember, these voxels rem represent a small chunk of your body. Now you might say, well, let's just sign an x-ray in like this. In comes the x-ray. But as the x-ray goes through this voxel, it's going to be attenuated by this one and also this one and all the others before it comes out to the detector on the other side. So that's going to be no good because we won't be able to know which of these voxels did the most attenuating so we need to think of a clever way of doing this and it works by as you might have guessed by the image above the x-ray scanner moving around and scanning from different positions from this side from 45 degrees to that from above 45 degrees to that and from that from those four scans i'm going to show you how and it's a very clever this we can work out the density of each of these voxels remember this is what happening on a much larger scale and that's why you need such computing power to do it let's consider this example here consisting of a body and these numbers represent the densities eight being higher density and two being lower density let's imagine the x-ray signing in from this side here as it passes through these it's going to become attenuated consider this body represented by four voxels here these numbers represent the densities of each part on a scale of 1 to 10. Let's now consider an x-ray coming in from this side. As it passes through the body, it's going to be attenuated. And from that amount of attenuation, we can tell the density. You don't need to know how at this stage, but obviously the more attenuation, the higher the density. 
So over here, when the X-ray comes out the other side, it's going to be detected. And by doing a bit of math, the detector can work out how much has been attenuated and therefore the densities. So going through here, goes through 6 and 5, so that represents a total density of 11. And through here, we would get 10. The detector then feeds this into the computer, into a memory array, and puts the numbers in like this. The two 11s at the top, because that was went through the top two voxels, and the two 10s at the bottom. So far, so good. But now what happens is the X-ray moves around by 45 degrees and comes in like this. The detector is also moved around. And you can see that this beam here would detect a density of 5. This one detects a density of 8. And this one would also detect a density of 8. What happens now? Well, remember this is fed into the memory. And that array looks like that. And remember this 5 was from this voxel here, so that goes in there. This one that went through the middle went through this one and this one, so that 8 goes into those two. And this 8 was from this bottom voxel, so it goes in there. Now you might be wondering, well, why have we just done that? We've just done it from one angle there. Why have we done it now from another angle? Well, what happens next is that these two add together. What that gives us is the following. Well, if we look up here, the 11 and the 5 add together to give us 16. And if we repeat that for all the others, we get 19 in the top right. 10 plus 8 gives us 18. 10 plus 8 gives us 18 there. So this is our current memory array. So this was the memory array there, but now it's been added to that one. So this is what goes forward. And we can ignore that previous process. So let's now scan it again. The body, remember, looked like this. 5, 6, 2, 8. That's the original densities. And now the X-rays is coming in from the top like this. Our memory array down here, sorry, not our memory, our detector down here detects 5 and a 2, gives us uh, 7. And the 6 and the 8 gives us 14. Now, before we add this to our previously stored memory up here, we need to put this into a, a two by two matrix. The seven is from these two voxels, so it goes into there and there, and the 14 is into the two on the right. This is now added to the one above, up there, to give us our new memory array, which will be 23 over here, 33 in the top right, and you can do the maths yourself, 25 and 32, and that's just from adding each array, so that one goes with that one, that one goes with that one, and that one goes with that one, and so on, that one with that one. So that's our current memory array over there. Now we still need to keep scanning it because we'll see why in a minute. So remember, this is our body. I've been doing it in blue so far, let's keep it like that. Five, two, six, and eight. X ray is now coming in from here, like this. And our detector ray is now made of three parts because there are three passages for the X-ray to go through. And if we work out our numbers, we get two there, 13 there, and six there. Now, before we add it onto the previous voxel, we need to put it back into a, sorry, memory array. We need to put it back into this sort of arrangement. The two is from this one, so that goes there. 13 is from the x-rays that went through the top left and the bottom right and the 6 is over there. Now again the process is this is added to that to give us our new memory array which will look something like this. 13 plus 23 gives us 36 and if you continue the process you'll get 39 in the top right, 27 at the bottom there and 45 over there. Why have we done all this? At the moment, it looks like a right mess. How does that actually give us information about what the body looked like? Well, this is the clever part. So the first thing we do is we notice that the sum for each stage of the density detected was 21. So if we put that into a two by two array. And as I say, that's just the sum of all of these 
Obviously, we don't know that, but we know this. This is what the detector picked up, and we can sum those there. Likewise, the 14 plus the 7 here, and if we keep it up, they'll always equal 21. It's the total density. So we subtract our memory array from the 21 to give us our new array. That will give us 15 up here, 18 over here, 6 here, and 24 down there. Now we're close. So we're almost there. This is what we've currently got in our memory array. Now it's not quite the same densities as we had at the start. Let's see what we do. Well, hopefully you remember that we had our body and we scanned it once from this side. We moved it 45 degrees, scanned it from that side, from the top, and once more from the left there at 45 degrees to the horizontal. So we had our original one scan and then we had three further scans. So our image, or our densities that we currently have, are three times too big. So what we need to do is divide this by three. That will give us our original densities. 15 by three is five. Get uh, two over here, six over here, and eight down here. And if you remember, that was the original densities of our body. So you can see how the computer would do this very quickly following an algorithm. Um, and it can calculate the original density of the body and therefore we can spot that actually this is much denser than this why well perhaps we can investigate that further but remember the body's divided up into millions of these three-dimensional voxels millions and millions of them your whole body and that's how ct or cat scans work